to a fish, the world would be flat, two-dimensional. You could swim forward, backward, left, and right. But anyone who said there's a direction called up, outside the lily pads, outside the universe, would be considered crazy, would be considered a lunatic, you know, uh, uh, somebody that ha has to be sent to the loony farm. <laughs> However, I once thought, what happens if you reach down now and grab one of the fish? Lifted the fish into hyperspace, the third dimension. Right. This fish would see world unseen. New laws of physics would start to, to, to unfold. People moving without fins. Yes. Uh, people breathing without water. A whole new law of physics erupting once you go into hyperspace. And then if you put the fish back in the pond, can you imagine the tail this fish is going to tell? Yes, and, and how, uh, what sort of derisive life he would be leading? That's right. <laughs> that he would have disappeared out of the pond and simply rematerialized someplace right. else. Right. Now, we, as beings in hyperspace, looking down on the fish, say, well, these fish are silly. They're simply two-dimensional things. Why don't they realize that the universe is obviously in, in hyperspace? We would have the powers of a god. We'd be able to lift fish out of the pond, put them back anywhere else, whereupon they would uh, rematerialize out of nowhere. We could reach into safes and, and take out gold. It would be child's play to reach into any sealed container and take out the gold. Now, the revolution in physics in the last, oh, ten years has been the realization that we are the fish. We spend our life smugly, arrogantly, in three dimensions, moving forward, backward, left, right, up, down. Yes, thinking that what we see in our little pond is all there is. But you see, that can't be true, because in three dimensions, there's not enough room to explain gravity, the nuclear force, the electromagnetic forces. But in ten-dimensional hyperspace, everything collapses down to an equation so simple you could put it in your pocket. So in other words, as Stephen Hawking has stated, we are now about to read the mind of God, now, some of you may have, uh, a few of you may have tried to read his book, uh, Brief History of Time, and fewer still may have actually finished his book. Well, my book takes you beyond where Stephen Hawking leaves off. He ends his book, by the way, by saying that, wait, there's this new theory on the horizon. It's a theory defined in ten dimensions. It's the most fantastic theory physicists have ever seen. I'm constantly amazed by this theory. However... I'm at the end of my book, so the end. The he end. ends his book. Mm -hmm. He ends his book on what I think is the greatest romance of, of the last half century, and that's the romance of hyperspace. And that's why I decided to write a book for people that don't know any math at all, people that never took a physics course in their life would appreciate a book explaining how hyperspace could explain black holes, the possibility of time travel, uh, the intricacies of perhaps life in outer space. And that's why I decided to write the book Hyperspace, which the New York Times called one of the best science books of the year. Uh, both the Washington Post and the New York Times uh, loved the book and said it was one of the best books they've seen in the area of science. So I want the average person to realize that the feats of the paranormal are child's play if you are a being ex living in hyperspace, looking down on the pond that we so arrogantly believe in mm. our universe.